Welcome back to Dry Hollow Homestead. If this is Danielle, we are in the kitchen again making cheese. Today, we are doing a pepper jack. This is very similar. It is exactly the same as Monterey Jack, the recipe, except we're going to add peppers. And today, we're actually gonna be adding chilies. Um, this is what I have, so this is what we're gonna add. And I will show you in another step how we actually get that added into our cheese. So our first step is to heat up our milk to 89 degrees. I have about six, six and a half gallons in my cheese pot. And I, this is raw milk. This recipe that I'm showing you is with raw milk. If you want to make this with store-bought pasteurized homogenized milk, you would go more in the instructions of this book, the directions of this book. But I tweak it just a little bit because I am using raw milk. So if you're making raw milk cheese, you can follow along with me and you'll um, have great delicious milk. So first we heat this up to 89 degrees. I skim the cream off of most of my gallons because I really love butter. <laughs> so I'm making butter at the same time as I'm making my cheese. So get it up to 89 degrees and turn off the heat. I will bring you back when we are there. Okay, we are at temperature now. I have turned off my heat. We are going to add our culture. So for this, it, you need a mesophilic culture. Um, you can buy the freeze-dried culture packs from New England Cheese Making. I have some linked in the description box from Amazon. Um, once you use that the first time, save way, and I have a video I will link in the cards up above. Save the way from that so that you can continually use um, your mesophilic backsplash way as a starter and you don't have to use as much, spend as much money using the culture every time. So you can either use a quarter teaspoon or half a teaspoon of the freeze dried culture, half a teaspoon freeze dried culture, or I'm using three fourths a cup of that backsplash whey. And we're just gonna sprinkle that onto the surface of our milk. And then taking a long spoon, I love this, my mother-in-law and father-in-law got this for me and it, it fits my pot great. We're going to mix it in by, you know, with this up and down motion. <laughs> we, from the top, incorporate it from the top of the milk to the bottom of the milk. We're going to leave, so we're going to let this culture for 45 minutes, setting a timer, putting the lid on it, keeping the heat off. We want it to hold at that 89 degrees. That temperature needs to stay the same. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Put the lid on it. Make sure to set a timer. And then we will be back. The timer has gone off. We are ready to add our rennet into our uh, milk here. It's, it has ripened. You need a quarter cup of water. I always uh, use it for my Berkey. It needs to be, it needs to be non-chlorinated. And then we're gonna add our rennet. We're gonna do three-fourths a teaspoon of rennet. I have some linked in the description box that I get off Amazon. This I actually got off New England Cheese Making Company. Uh, we're gonna do three-fourths a cup, or three-fourths a teaspoon into a quarter cup to just swish. And then we're going to pour it onto the surface, like so, and mix it in again, incorporating top to bottom just like the culture. And now we are still at 89 degrees. I am going to put a lid back on this pot, set a timer for 40 minutes, and we're gonna let this coagulate for 40 minutes, and then we will come back timer has gone off. It has already been the full 40 minutes and we are going to look for a clean break. If you have a clean finger, I just finger, <laughs> I just washed my finger. Uh, definitely not a clean break. I'm going to give this at least 20 more minutes. That is not clean. So I'm going to set a timer for another 20 minutes. Um, I probably maybe should have done a little more rennet but I'm gonna check back in 20 minutes and see what we have. After the 20 minutes came back and it still was not ready, I should have used more rennet. Gave it 10 more Let's minutes. Let's check for a clean break. 
Oh, I'm still gonna give it about 10 more minutes. No rush, I got lots to do anyway. Let's see, King Finger. Yay! I'm not, I'm not on the It's finally right. So let's go ahead and cut. Now comes the time where we cut our curds. Today we're going to use three fourths of an inch cubes is what we're trying to do. So I just go all, um, I make lines three fourths of an inch apart in one direction and then from the other side I do a grid into my curds. And then I try to go from all like four corners of my round pot, three like at a 90 degree angle where I've already cut to try to cut underneath those. And it's never perfect, and I'm okay with that. And if you're going to do it at home, you really got to be okay with that. Um, so I continue to do this as best I can on all sides. And then we're going to let them firm up for 10 minutes. I really should have used more like one teaspoon of rennet for this six and a half gallons of milk. But you live, you learn. I will next time. And... It still turned out well. I kind of uh, vary how much milk I use by how much milk I have. Now comes the difference between a Monterey Jack and a Pepper Jack, which is the peppers. For me today, I'm going to actually use chili peppers. These are dehydrated chili peppers. I used a handful and I just ground it up in my mortar and pestle. And then you're going to put that on the stove in two cups of water and you're going to bring it to a boil and then turn it off and that is going to be what you put in your um, curds at the end to make the pepper jack but uh, you need to do this around this stage that way it has time to cool off okay so we're going to be sitting and stirring this after it has sat for 10 minutes to firm up the curds we're going to be stirring for 40 minutes bringing the temperature up to 100, taking that whole 40 minutes to stir, just like in our Monterey Jack. So we're gonna be real gentle um, on our, in the beginning, breaking up any big, long curds. <laughs> Break them up into half inch size, uh, taking 40 minutes to get to the temperature of 100 degrees. And as this is doing it, I'm also letting this uh, two cups of red pepper um, chilies, dry pepper chilies, a steep in this boiling water and let it cool down beside me because we're going to use that to turn this into pepper jack. Okay, so we have stirred for 40 minutes. We are now at 100 degrees. Um, our next step is to turn the heat off and set a timer for 30 minutes. We're going to hold these curds at the temperature of 100 degrees but we want to stir every few minutes uh, to keep them from matting on the bottom okay our 30 minutes is up i stirred it maybe probably about four or five times now we actually set another timer for 30 minutes and we leave this undisturbed we do not stir it at all we're going to let the curds form in a mass at the bottom of this pot after this 30 minutes is up we're going to be getting our cheese into our press so this is a great time to go ahead and sanitize your press, sanitize your cheese cloth, and your mold. So I usually do that with boiling water. Um, there's many different ways, but that I find works great for me. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. Okay, the curds have sat at the bottom of the pot for 30 minutes, and then I went ahead and dumped all the way off into a large bucket that I'm actually probably going to feed to my animals. This is that those chili peppers that we ground up a little bit and uh, boiled in two cups of water. And then that this has cooled now for well over an hour. So <clears throat> we're adding that, the liquid and all the uh, seeds, everything that have cooled into our curds. Now I did probably about three tablespoons, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Who knows? <laughs> And then we're going to mix this up for 10 minutes. Now, this is when I would use some gloves. <laughs> so I've joked around about how it's gross when people wear gloves in their kitchen. But yeah, gloves would be a good idea if you're going to be playing around with chili peppers. So I'm going to go do that. And we're going to stir this together for 10 minutes before we add it to the press. 
At this point, we are adding our curds into our press that is lined with a cheesecloth. And um, yeah, I should have been wearing gloves for this part because it did burn my hand a little bit. And then we're going to press firmly for one hour. So a firm press for one hour. Okay, after an hour of pressing, you're supposed to flip it and press on firm for overnight. And this is also the time you should get your salt brine ready. Uh, an 18% salt brine. I've said this on other videos, but in case you don't know, that's five, uh, five cups of water, one cup of salt. So I usually put it in a three gallon bucket so that I keep in the outside fridge. And I have 15 cups of water, three cups of salt. And to keep it in the outside fridge, you need to bring it to room temperature before you put your salt, your cheese in it. So I need to get that out tonight. I'm going to be warming up to room temperature overnight. If I've used it several times, I will add about half a cup of salt back into it. Um, but I just did that last time, so I don't need to do it this time. The next morning, we take it out of our press, and we're going to add our cheese now to our salt brine. It's going to be in the salt brine for 12 hours, but you need to flip it halfway through. So at six hours, go ahead and flip it. And then after that, we're going to take it out and let it air dry on the counter for two to three days. And then this is how I age it. I just vacuum seal it and age it in the fridge. Pepper Jack takes two to three months to age and be delicious.